Hello friends, this video on introduction to Euclid's Geometry part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The topics to be covered in this chapter are history of geometry, book elements by Euclid. There is a book called Elements that was written by Euclid. Terms such as definition, axioms, postulates and theorems. We will give more focus on fifth postulate by Euclid and we will also solve some numerical. And we will try to understand what is non Euclidean geometry as well. So, let us start our chapter with geometry. What is geometry? I think we know this geometry is a word that is derived from two words geo, that means earth. And metry that means metry. Okay. So it was nothing but measuring earth. So when I say measuring earth, see there was a need to measure earth. Why? Earlier the society was more of an agrarian society where the civilization used to be near river. Okay. And in Egypt, so this happened in Egypt. In Egypt, there was a river called River Nile. This River Nile used to overflow. You see, in India also we have River Ganga and this River Ganga also overflow. And we have the Delta region. So this River Nile used to overflow and this used to wipe out the boundaries. So here all these farmers used to stay and they used to have the boundaries. And each uh, land used to belong to one person. So different people uh, claiming uh, rights for different land and these lands were well demarcated but these river Nile used to overflow and used to wipe these boundaries. So if you see this river Nile will overflow in this area during rainy seasons all this area will be submerged in the river okay this whole boundary will be overflown this will be wiped out between the adjoining fields of different land owners and after the flood is over this boundary has to be redrawn but you, you don't know what was the boundary earlier. So it was a difficult task. And thus the Egyptians developed a technique. A technique of geometry. And they developed the rules for calculating simple area. And also some simple construction. Okay, So if you see Egyptians actually developed basic geometry where they could actually draw some area like square square, rectangle, triangle or, or different kind of areas they could draw, they could find the area, they could find the area of these different shapes, typically land shapes. Okay, So they use, they also use this knowledge of geometry to construct uh, pyramids. You see Egypt is famous for its pyramid and canals, granaries. So Egyptians knew a lot. They knew that uh, Pyramid is something which is with a solid uh, base. The base can be triangle, rectangle, square, or any parallel. And all its side faces are triangle. So you see, these side faces are triangle. And all these converge to a top. So typically, if you see a pyramid, so pyramid can be, you see, this pyramid may have a square base. I don't know. Right? It may have a square base or it may have a, a rectangular base but all these edges are triangle and all these triangles merge the point. They knew all these concepts of pyramids. So they were actually good in geometry but these geometries were more of uh, useful in day to day purpose. In fact if you see Indians, Indians also were good in geometry. So Indians uh, sub continent excavation at Harappa and Mojindaro. It shows that Indian Indus Valley civilization and Indus Valley civilization is pretty old and it was almost 3000 BC that is the Indus Valley civilization. So this Indus Valley civilization people in these civilization were also good in geometry. They used extensive use of geometry. This civilization was highly planned. The society 
was pretty good. The roads were all parallel to each other. They had good drainage system. And this, this proves that the town dwellers in this society were skilled in geometry. So if you see this fire, fireplace that is used typically uh, to perform any Vedic rites, any Vedic rituals and rites, this kind of fireplace is used. Right? This fireplace also, if you see this geometry here, this is square, again a square, concentric squares. So that proves that people in that age also had a good knowledge of geometry. So that means that the geometry was being applied and developed everywhere in the world. In 3000 BC also almost, you see, uh, 5000 years prior to us, people were equipped with geometry. But it was happening in unsystematic way. These information were passed on from one generation to another orally. If you see, maybe this is a senior guy and he will convey the same message orally to his son. And the same thing will be conveyed back to his son. Orally. It was all oral communication. Or sometime through palm leaves. In palm leaves also the message were conveyed. So that means geometry was there. Geometry was there long time back as well. But it was unsystematic. Okay. So it was not systematic at all. And their knowledge was not passed correctly from one generation to another. Okay, so geometry is nothing but measuring the whole earth, and the need came typically from uh, the Nile civilization where they wanted to measure the piece of land. But if you see in, in, in Indian civilization also, we see that, uh, or we conclude that people were well equipped with geometry. If you see the geometry in different civilization in in past. You see, these are the civilizations which were uh, developed in uh, in BCs, Greece, Iraq, Egypt, India. Right? These were the old civilizations. So Iraq, if you know, is, is a Babylonia. It's called Babylonian civilization. All these civilizations used geometry for practical purpose. Please note that these civilizations used geometry for practical purpose. I told you, for example, Egyptian used geometry for Recreating the boundaries of the land after the flood. Okay, so they they did not try to develop it as a systematic science. It was not a systematic science. Okay. It was more for a geometry purpose. All these civilizations. Okay, for example, if you see. They accepted the fact that diameter divides the circle into two halves. So if you take a circle and if you take any diameter, any diameter will divide the circle into two half. Both this half are equal. They just accepted it. They never tried to prove it. They never put a thought on it and try to understand why. Why does a diameter divides a circle into two half? Okay, they knew it. They knew it that a diameter will actually divide the circle into two half. But they, they never bother to understand why, right? So these civilizations, geometry was there, but, and these civilizations I'm talking about Iraq, Egypt, and India. So in these three civilizations, geometry was more for practical purpose, not for systematic science. But in Greece, Greece was the only place where the Greek people, they emphasize on reasoning. Reasoning. They spent time understanding why, why the diameter of a circle divides the circle into two equal half. Right? So Greeks were interested in, in, in establishing the truth of the statement they observed by deductive reasoning. So it was Greek who tried to establish, establish relationship. between observation, what they observe by reasoning. 
by deductive reasoning actually. Okay, and they wanted to, you can say, verify, verify the observed data by reasoning. For example, if you take, if you draw a circle, take a diameter and uh, just draw a diameter, you will see that it will divide. If you calculate the area of this and calculate the area of this, you will see that both this part, part A and part B has an equal area. If, so the other civilization people, Iraq, Egypt, and India, they accepted the fact, but it was Greek was a Greek who spent time understand why, why this happens. There's so many things. For example, if you take a triangle and it's a right triangle, this is uh, suppose perpendicular, this is B, this is hypotenuse, then P square plus B square is going to S square. This happens, but why, why it happens, right? So, so that reasoning, that deductive reasoning came specially from Greece. Okay. So earlier, please note, there were four uh, known civilizations in the past, India, Iraq, Egypt, and Greece. It was Greece and geometry was there in all the civilization. So in other civilization like Iraq, Egypt, and India, it was more of a practical purpose. They used geometry to build good roads, to build pyramids, canals, but they never spent time in making it as systematic science. They never spent time to understand why this happens. It was Greece who spent time it was Greek who spent time and uh, tried to relate the or try to establish the truth of the statement they observe by detective history. Okay, for example, uh, you must have heard of this name Thales, person called Thales, Thales theorem, it's a very famous theorem. Okay, the theorem is the same that the, that the circle is bisected by diameter. If you see theorem, Thales theorem, it says that circle is bisected by diameter and this person Thales he was a Greek mathematician so, so it is a Greek person a Greek mathematician actually who tried to found, find that why the circle is bisected by diameter and this is a pretty old this person Greek uh, Thales was lived from 640 BC to 546 BC almost 2500 year old theorem also if you see Pythagoras theorem this one p square plus b square is equal to a square so this was given in uh, 572 BC 572 BC by Pythagoras and Pythagoras is nothing but student of Thales. So Thales student was Pythagoras and he gave this theorem called Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so if you see, let me repeat once again, these civilizations, they were focusing for, on geometry for a practical purpose. Okay, and this civilization Focusing ge geometry for deductive science to understand why it happens. They told you, see the history, his tales, tales, and his life was from 624 to 546 BC. And he is famous for Thales theorem. Thales theorem is nothing but a circle is bisected by its diameter. He proved it. Why? Then we have Pythagoras. Pythagoras, he was a student of Thales. 570 to 495 BC. He gave the Pythagoras theorem. Okay. And then Democritus, you must have heard of this guy, Democritus. And he was from 460 to 370 BC. I'm just, uh, I've just mentioned few of the Greek uh, mathematicians. They're all Greek, famous Greek mathematicians. He proved that area of cone is equal to 1 by 3 pi r square h. He proved it. Okay. And then we had Aristotle. Okay. 
So he was from 384 to 322 BC. And he focused a lot on reasoning. A lot on reasoning. And then we had Euclid. In fact, Alexander was uh, Aristotle's uh, disciple, right? Uh, Aristotle taught Alexander. And then we had Euclid. Euclid came in the year of almost 382 BC. He, what he did was he compiled a book. And that book is very important. Compiled, and that's why he's called Father of Geomet. He compiled a book called Elements. Okay. He used to stay in Egypt. And then if you see Archimedes also, there are all these great uh, mathematicians from Greek. Okay, 2 1 2 BC. He gave the principle of buoyancy. You must have your, you will study in physics in higher classes. So, what I'm trying to draw is it was the Greece civilization which gave birth to deductive geometry. It made geometry as a deductive science. Right? So, please note here that Euclid comes here, but prior to Euclid also we had great mathematicians. We had Thales, Pythagoras, Democritus, Aristotle, all these people, all these great mathematicians helped in evolving geometry. Euclid compiled everything in a book. We will talk about that. Why Euclid is important. This chapter is all about Euclidean geometry and we'll see how Euclid contributed in this geometry. But understand that prior to Euclid also, they were great mathematicians in this Greek world. Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos. You can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot. For